Yes, welcome back to the breakfast show. Time now for financial minutes here on TBS. Now with Raya just around the corner. Of course, there's a lot of pressure involved in you know spending money, a lot of money going out. This is the time when people say, oh, money only going out, no money coming in. Uh, exactly. You know what? I'm sure everybody will agree. Uh, you know, there's uh, like we mentioned earlier. You know, you want to redo your house, revamp your house. Buy you new get furniture. Exactly. You want to get your kids baju, and then you don't forget the queer and all the food yeah. you got to prepare. All these cost house. money, but of course, yeah. with a proper budgeting and allocation, you can actually curb the problem of overspending. Exactly, which is uh, pretty tough right now. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions, especially with uh, a lot of uh, increase in prices uh, in essential goods and services. That's, That's right. why we have with us today our financial guru, Mr. Yap Ming Hui, will be sharing with us some tips on uh, riot budgeting to help take the stress out of the festive season. So over to you, Mr. Yap. Good morning, fellow Malaysians. You're now watching Financial Freedom Minutes with Yap Ming Hui. Today, uh, we are going to talk about the smart spending tips for Hari Raya celebrations. We are now about three weeks away from Hari Raya, and we all hope to have uh, a fun, joyful celebration of Hari Raya, whether you are Muslim or not Muslim. Okay? But what we don't make, want to make sure is that we don't spend too much okay, or overspend, so at the end, we actually suffer from financial hangover after Hari Raya. So, it's very important for me to actually make a note here to that I would like to share three tips today on our spending for this Hari Raya preparations. The first tip I'm going to talk about is, of course, to set a budget. We have to set a budget because we want to avoid uh, overspending on the, uh, this Hari Raya celebration and at the end, we have a lot of mess to clear up after the Hari Raya. So the, there are three steps here under setting a budget. Step number one is to set an amount that you are willing to spend or you are able to spend. So whether you are setting aside 3000 or 5000 uh, for this Hari Raya celebrations, set that amount first. Step two is to list down the items that we are planning to spend, like what Aisha mentioned just now, clothing, food, traveling, and maybe some money gift to the elders. Okay, Those are items, we'll all list it down. And the fact that we have limited budget, just as I mentioned, whether it's 3000 or 5000 that's why we need to prioritize. Because if we don't prioritize and we just want to spend based on desire, then there'll be an endless item for us to spend and you'll never have enough money to spend. So that's why we need to prioritize to spend on the item which is very critical and important. And third step, whatever budget that you have set, make sure you spend according to your budget. There's no point setting a budget and at the end you spend it uh, on items that we never actually listed down in your budget. So make sure you spend according to your plan. Now, that is about budgeting, number one. Uh, step, number, uh, step number two I want to share about is talking about uh, smart spending here. Now, how do we spend wisely? Basically, I think very important is that we are now three weeks away from Hari Raya, and I think we still have time to do proper uh, shopping and things like that. We can, we can see in the departmental stores, uh, supermarkets, and also factories, there are sales available all around. So imagine that if we can actually go for sales, then we can actually get the normal item for easily 20, 30, or even 40 percent discount. So I think these are discounts that we must actually uh, take advantage on. Number two, of course, if you have, use, uh, you have membership, uh, members' card for any like shopping center or departmental centers, go ahead and use your members' card. If you have not have a members' card, also, you can actually apply, not too late to apply the member card and actually enjoy the points for whatever shopping that you've done. Now, thirdly, I think it's very important if you don't do traveling for actually Hari Raya, whether you're actually Balik Kampong or you're going to actually traveling for holiday, I think it's very important for us to plan ahead. As now we know that if you actually plan ahead, we can always get an air ticket, even hotel, at a cheaper price. So I'm sure that uh, this few points I share with you is just a refresher or just a reminder to you because I know a lot of viewers out there, out there it is very good in short, doing a smart shopping and spending. Okay. Last but not least, the tip I'm going to share today is to try to avoid using credit card when you actually do spending for hair raya and try to use cash uh, if possible. Because when you use credit card, there's very ten high tendency that we actually overspend because when you are spending for the particular month during the two weeks time, it's very difficult for you to track how much have you spent and whether you actually over the budget or not. So if you have problem in managing credit card, I would strongly suggest you to maybe allocate a certain sum of cash. I mentioned about 3,000 ringgit, things like that. Put it aside and use the amount of cash to do whatever shopping and whatever spending. 
then try to actually maybe keep your credit card at home and don't bring it to the shopping center. Otherwise, you may not be able to actually stand the temptation to do that. Now, if you have a good habit of paying off your credit card every month, you've got no problem managing your credit card. If you're able to use credit card, I would suggest you also to use cashback credit card because for every cash uh, that you actually spend, every week you spend, I believe there are like maybe 1% or 0.5% of cashback to you for by spending. So there's a further discount and saving for the money that you spend. So this is what I have to share today about how to do a proper smart spending for your high Raya celebrations. And I wish you guys all uh, happy, joyful Hari Raya celebrations. Always remember, every one of us can achieve financial freedom. Talk to an independent financial advisor to help you to optimize whatever money you have. So, over back to you, Aisha and Hanson. Thank you very Thank much, you, Mr. Yap. Yeah. There uh, you go. It's pretty simple. It, Mr. Yap is not saying don't spend yeah. on anything. It just says, remember, three tips just to reiter reiterate. Set a budget. Uh, stick to that budget, spend wisely, and of course, uh, use cash, not credit, if possible. I like the terms financial hangover, because, <laughs> you know, that's the first time, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> normally, you have other kind of hangover. Uh, <laughs> occasionally. Occasionally. Okay. occasionally. But anyhow, uh, coming back to the, the, the credit card thing, of course, we yes. know uh, Malaysians love our credit cards. I mean, we, we yes. love it so much that we had to impose a, a tax on it yes. to make to curb people from having, like, 10, 15 cards. Yes. But the thing is, we can't deny the fact that credit cards are convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, they are safe mm -hmm. uh, versus carrying out, you know, if you have a credit limit of 10,000, mm -hmm. you, know, you won't be carrying 10,000 cash around. Yes. So how do you go about uh, balancing that? Not overspending, but mm. still, you know, treat it as, um, uh, the, or utilize the convenience out of it and the safety mm. yeah. features. So that's why I say, see, what, for whatever things which is convenient nowadays, like any technology item, things like that, when it's too convenient, it immediately mm. put a lot of addiction right. to mm. those items. So, so whether it's actually a gig internet, right. whether it's actually a mobile phone, right. or whether it's a credit card. But is it the solution though? I mean, if you mm. say that is, you know, these things are making it easy for yeah. us to overspend, we yeah. just don't use it. Is that is that is that the solution you would suggest? Yes, that would, I would say the last resort. Mm -hmm. right. Because uh, I think for some of us who actually know how to actually manage credit card, we may right. feel that it, for right. us to use or not to use credit card is right. a choice by us that we can right. control with our free will. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're not seeing people who are actually so addicted to credit card debts. They are right. so deep in debt and they, they don't seem to have the power to right. control themselves. Mm -hmm. right. So for these people is that the best way to actually to stop them from using more credit card to a certain asset is right. use a scissor and kind of cut out the credit card. You come to a point where uh, you know you just don't know what to do and you just can't control yourself yes. uh, anymore. That would be the best solution. Now um, as Hansen mentioned it's you know it's convenient, it's yeah. safe. Yeah. And of course when you want to make big purchases you yeah. really don't want to be buying like I want to buy a refrigerator. But well, I'm not gonna be walking there around is an alternative. there is an alternative which is the debit cards, right? Mm -hmm. The debit cards are a good alternative. Yes. You only yeah. spend what cash you, what have, you have what you have and if you don't have it then it won't go through. Or yes. a charge card which means you must pay at the end of the month oh, yes. rather than, you know, okay, I'll pay a, a certain percentage of it. Right. Now, um, mm. of course, uh, you know, a lot of people will be using their credit cards when making uh, big purchases, like yeah. I mentioned just then. Um, there are a lot of shops or uh, outlets out there that are offering a 0% uh, you know, installment yeah. uh, interest, yes. That's another things big like thing. that. Yes. Exactly. So, mm. um, you know, what What's your take on that? You know, should it be advised, or yeah. how does mm. person, uh, a person handle that? Should so people buy a couch or a washing machine, or some, you know, or even uh, stuff that and pay? You know, since uh, we are not celebrating, celebrating Hari Raya, why don't we just indulge ourselves? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the new sofa, that yeah. think, we, new, we deserve a new fridge. We deserve a new uh, furniture right. and etc. Yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So that, that's a that's a challenge there. Mm -hmm. Because when we actually uh, in a festival kind of seasons, I uh, know we we feel very much like this spending. Yeah. But the, the problem is that of course it's good for us to actually enjoy the spending doing that without and then taking out the advantage of credit card, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and taking out the advantage of zero uh, zero percent uh, installment payments, installment payments yeah. thing like that. But the question is that what do you do after that? Mm -hmm. No, but right. whatever I enjoy, uh, you actually enjoy, okay, you, you have got the outstanding debt that you need to pay, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. you know? So then the idea is how do we actually balance the proper spending mm -hmm. with the, actually the budget that we actually have, mm -hmm. so we can actually, do, uh, we don't have to suffer the what I call just now, financial hangover. Again, that, 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 that this is, uh, you know, I, I think the 0% installment plan, it's, it's great. It helps mm. ease a lot of burdens for certain people. But yeah. in what situations would you recommend it to be used? Mm. I, I realize actually if you will have certain items that you really need to buy. Right? Mm -hmm. Say, for example, mm -hmm. you need to buy a certain computer. Mm. Uh, there is really must, a must of 
computer or notebook that you only use it for your work, things like that. You don't have enough credit uh, money to buy it and things like that. Mm. So if you buy it using credit card, of course, it's more expensive. Right. So it's zero percent installment kind of plan because it's actually cheaper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this for well, item which is necessary for you to actually invest, for you to really actually. Uh, use it for your work, right. I think it's justified. But the question is that some people will actually abuse such a facility right. and convenience, right. you know, say that uh, I need to actually buy some clothing, I need to actually buy certain items, that, right. which is not really necessary, but because of such a convenience, they use it and they incur a lot of debt. Mm. Let's remember, even though it's 0% installment plan, at the end of the day, you still need to pay back your hard cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And this amount of money that you could have actually use it to invest, to grow for your financial freedom goal. Oh? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, good advice there, uh, Mr. Yap. Okay, on that <laughs> note, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for sharing with us on some of the tips on how to spend this, right? I hope you got uh, some tips there, and uh, hopefully when you go out and spend, you would actually be more careful if you're already not. Uh, but if you are, well, good on you then. Exactly. Okay, with that...